God bless each and every one of you. My name is Reverend Ronald Davis. This is the Word of Power Gospel Hour. We thank you for uh, tuning in and watching telecast tonight. I pray that you will be blessed. I pray that the Word of God will change you and challenge you. Can I hear an amen? amen. You know, in Jeremiah uh, 23, 29, it said the Word of God is like a fire. It's like a hammer to burst a rock asunder. Amen. The Bible also says, as I think Psalms 119, to enter us out of word giveth light and giveth understanding unto the simple. Oh man, amen. I pray the word of God gets down in your heart today and does a work in your life. It does something in your life. The word of God should do something for you. It should bless you. It should, it should bless you. It should bless you financially. It should bless you. I'm not one of them prosperity preachers, believe me. But God does want us to prosper so we can have it to sow into the kingdom. Amen. Yeah. you got to have to give. Amen. Uh, the Word of God should do something for you. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ in uh, Romans 1.8. He said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it is a power unto salvation. It's also a power unto healing, the power unto blessing too. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Have a message today I believe is going to bless you. Shall we pray? Father, I pray today that every person that needs to hear this message today and the word of the Lord, I pray they'll tune in to this telecast. Every person that needs this message today, I pray they'll turn to this station right now, Father God, and that you would touch them, that the, hope, that the Holy Ghost would go through these airways right out into their rooms, wherever they're at, and touch them, Father God, and open their heart up to receive and grab the word of God that's able to save the soul. And I pray the word of God will bless them and do whatever it needs to do today. In the name of Jesus, amen. We're here to stir up and challenge people and fire people up and get them back on fire for the kingdom of God. Too many lukewarm and warm and cold Christians today. Too many have, have left their first love. There's a falling away. The Bible says in the end times there come a, a falling away. This is sidetracked off my message, but this is the word of the Lord out of the spirit of God. Do you see, sometimes we get our pretty little messages all done up and we just really just pride, prideful of them and say, oh, wow, this is really good. And then God will come along and change you. Tell you just give a testimony or something that will touch people. He knows what it takes to touch the soul of man. He knows the hearts. He knows exactly what it takes. We don't. That's why he changes us. Can I hear an amen? Yes. Go with the flow of the Holy Ghost and the flow will, will make you go. Go with the flow and the flow will make you go. Come on. Don't fight the current. Go with the flow. Amen. Too many people resist the Holy Ghost. Peter stood up one day and said, you always resist the Holy Ghost. Don't resist him today. Let him draw you, convict you. Let him do whatever he needs to do. Do a work in your life. Can I hear an amen? Yes. Hallelujah. The name of the message today is don't let the tongues, don't let people in their tongues stop your destiny and race for God. Let me tell you something today. Some of you sit down and quit because people talked about you. Let me tell you, you're on track. You know why? Because the Word of God says, beware when all people talk good about you. So, honey, you right on track. Get back up and get out in the race. Don't worry about what people say about you. I'm going to show you in the Word of God. Jesus didn't let it affect him. He didn't let it bother him. Some of you people bothers you. They've accused some of you Holy Ghost people, some of you Pentecostals and Charismatics. You, you, you backslid. You got out of Pentecostal churches because people mocked you and laughed at you for the way you praise God, the way you worship. Hey, crap on them. Get back up today and get back in the race. God called you to run. He ain't called everybody to a Pentecostal church, but don't make fun of them. If he called them to that, that's their race, not yours. Leave them alone. Hallelujah. Some of you hinder God's people from running their race. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. They talk bad about Jesus, and honey, don't you think they won't talk bad about you? And when Jesus went through, he said you'll be persecuted for his name's sake. The things he went through, you'll go through it too. But you can't let it affect you. Pick yourself up out of the dirt. Move on and go on. The Bible says in Proverbs, a righteous man will fall seven times, but a, a, a sinner will fall into mischief. God, pick yourself back up, shake the dust off, and run on your race. Because you tripped up and failed, because the devil put tricks and traps before you, and you tripped up and failed, dust it off, let him heal you, and be back out there about our Father's business. Amen. 
I want to encourage some of you today because some of you sat down. Some of you have sat down. You, some of you used to cast demons out of people and, and got them set free and on fire for God. Some of you cast demons out and you quit doing that because the people said you were loony to them. They called me loony to them. They called me everything. They called Jesus full of the devil because he cast the devil out. Jesus said, what do you think, man? What's up with you? This is If Jesus was here today and spoke some of your lingo, lingo today, he said, what's up, bro? What's up? What's about it? What's up? Can Satan cast out Satan? I don't think so. What's up with that, man? I'll talk some lingo you can understand. Break it down simple for you today. Jesus says, Satan, Satan can't cast out Satan. So if they say you're full of the devil, huh, I can't cast out. Satan can't cast out Satan, so I ain't full of Satan. I'm full of the Holy Ghost. You better watch out calling Holy Ghost people full of the devil. That's borderline blasphemy. You don't want to go there. You don't want to do that. Let me break it down for you really simple. You don't want to go there. Because the Bible says you'll never be forgiven. Man, leave Holy Ghost people alone. Let them be about the Father's business, doing what he called them doing, the power he called them do it in. Hallelujah. I'm sick and tired of people coming against people to talk in tongues, casting out demons, doing the works. Some of you ain't nothing but the, but, but the, the devil's elite hit men in the church. Come on. You come against every person that does the work of God, that does anything supernatural, and you turn around and call him the devil. Come on, repent today. Get off that. Get off that in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Say, how do you know, preacher? I know. I'm full of the Holy Ghost. I speak in tongues. I cast out demons, and they tremble, and they call out. In the name of Jesus, because it's his word, his power, not mine. And he gave us power over the devil. He gave us power over all the works of darkness. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Don't let them affect you. Shake it off and go on. I'm telling some of you to encourage you. Some of you out there, you've done the works of God, and they make fun at you. They mocked you. They laughed at you. They mocked Jesus. They laughed Jesus to scorn when he went to raise Jairus' daughter from the dead. Jesus says, she sleeps. She sleeps. She's asleep. They mocked Jesus and laughed him to scorn, the Bible says. Some of you have laughed and mocked people to scorn. Need to repent. Need to back off. For God to back you off in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. This is a day that we need the power of God to get rid of the enemy, honey. You let the enemy use you. You need to get rid of the enemy. Jesus said, Prince, this world company had no place in me. Honey, some of y'all got to let the enemy have some places in you. You need to get rid of him. You need to cast him out yourself. In the name of Jesus, glory. So you can be about the Father's business doing his work, not the kingdom of the devil's work. Amen? Hallelujah. Over in Matthew chapter 13, verse 54. I want to encourage you today. I'm not being hot and cocky. I'm telling you something out there. I want to encourage some of you today. I want to encourage you because they've, come, they've said all manner of evil about you. But I want to encourage you. Jesus didn't let that bother him. Whenever the, he went in to raise that little girl from the dead, you know what he said? He didn't say, oh my, they don't believe. No, you know what he did? He put all the unbelievers out of the room. We didn't ever raise that girl from the dead. That's what some of you need to do. Put them unbelievers out. Them mockers and scoffers and put them unbelievers out and move on and go on and be about God's business. Come here and amen. Don't worry about them. Put them out. Hallelujah. You don't want that junking doubt around you anyway. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Honey, you want to hang around anointed Holy Ghost people. I'm here to tell you, hang around Holy Ghost people. Hang around anoint the Holy Ghost people who speak and confess the Word of God, honey. Watch and see what happened in your life. Get rid of some of them doubter shouters. Get rid of some of them people full of doubt and unbelief and everything else. Hang around some Holy Ghost Bible-confessing Christians full of the power of God and the anointing God. See what happened in your life. See if you don't start getting blessed. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whew. Matthew 13, 54. Let me show you what they said about Jesus. They're going to say it about you. Honey, I guarantee you they're going to say it about you, but it don't matter. It does not matter a bit. Be about the Father's business. Don't let us sidetrack you. It didn't sidetrack Jesus, and it shouldn't sidetrack us. Jesus said in John 14, 12, he said, The works I do, you shall do also. Only you shall do greater works, for I go unto the Father. 
But in order to do the greater works, Holy Ghost has got to do a greater work in us. So he can do a greater work through us. God's not using unholy vessels who disappoint his kingdom and fall. And everybody gets their eyes on it and blame it on God when it wasn't God at all. That's why the Bible says that to put new wine in new wine skins. You put new wine in old wine skins and it bursts. Amen. What God is doing is changing the church, honey. Hey, man, he's getting rid of, in other words, put off the old man, put on a new man that's made in his image and his likeness. This is holiness preaching here. Some of you don't like godly preaching, righteous preaching. You don't like holy preaching. You like loose preaching so you can live loose. Come on. Time to tighten it up, get in that straight and narrow gate that leads to everlasting life. And there will be few to find it and enter in. Come on. We need to find it and enter in so we can go on and do, finish the job God's got for the church to do. Hey, man, hallelujah, hallelujah. And when he was coming to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue, insomuch that they were astonished and said, Whence has this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Ain't he just the son of Joseph and Mary, a little low life? Ain't he just a carpenter like his daddy, a little nobody, a little, little no life? Come on. A nobody from nowhere? Come on, just like people. Just like the haughty, cocky church. Just like the church of Laodicea. Come on. They didn't need nothing. They didn't know, need nobody to preach to them, tell them nothing either. They had it all. Amen. They become a blasphemy club. We got to be careful or we can fall into that trap. Amen. Amen. I'm not talking to all churches out there. If you need this, take it. This is the gospel, honey. If you're sick and you need a pill, this is the gospel. If you're sick in the area of your life, take the gospel. It will heal you. Come on. Amen. <clears throat> Is not his mother called Mary, his brother and James, Jose and Simon and Judas, and his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence then has this man all these things? And they were offended in him. You see, some people's offended in me when I preach the word of God. They was offended in him. I'm sure many of you are offended of me right now. If you could reach me, you'd probably hit me. <laughs> if you were sitting out in the audience right now or in a congregation, you'd probably throw eggs and tomatoes at me. Come on. Amen. <laughs> they did Jesus. They wanted to stone him. Why is it any different today? When people, Holy Ghost people, preach conviction, they're, they're the same today as they was then. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But Jesus said unto him, they were offended in him, but Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor save his own country and in his own house. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Jesus couldn't move there because they were just religious. No relation. They was religious. Who does he think he is? Some of you sitting right there right now. Who does he think he is preaching to me like this? It ain't me preaching to you like that. It's what's in me that's preaching to you like that. And that's why you are like what you are. Because he wants to get in you and change you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to his name. Listen, the Holy Ghost wants to change people. The Holy Ghost wants to change us, fill us with him. So he can empower us to do God's kingdom work. He's called us all to do something. Don't let people stop you running your race and your destiny. Hallelujah. This is what I wrote down when I did this message. What Jesus said, he, we do the same works he did, and we do greater works. Honey, if you let people affect you, you ain't going to do no works. You're going to get offended, and you're going to sit down. You see, when Jesus preached right, come on, he offended the people. He wasn't offended. So, honey, if you're preaching right, the people will be offended. You won't get offended. And you'll keep on no matter what they say about you. Look right here. They said, what manner of man is this? He's just a carpenter. Who's he think he is? He's a low life, nobody. He's from uh, 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 Nazareth. The Bible says, Philip said, can, can a prophet, anything good come out of Nazareth? Yeah, something come out of Nazareth. A uh, no place a uh, 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 nobody come out of nowhere and put it on the map. Come on. Hallelujah. You see, God can take you and use you. Hallelujah. See, Jesus was a nobody till he went forth in the power of the Holy Ghost. 
Honey, once God, Holy Ghost gets you and he empowers you, you can come forth too. He can take a nobody and make a somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He can take you out of nowhere. Can a, can a prophet come out of West End of Louisville, Kentucky? Can an apostle come out of West End of Louisville, Kentucky? Can an evangelist come out of West End of Louisville, Kentucky? God can take a nobody out of nowhere, fill them full of himself, and use you. Don't let them stop you. Don't let them. It don't matter what they say. Come on. They said things about Jesus. They said bad things about him. Some of them said he's a wine bibber. He's a glutton. He sets with dirty, stinking old sinners. Woo! You might be sitting in church today, sitting by a dirty, stinking old sinner. But you know what? Jesus died for him just as well as he died for you. So you better get that stinking thinking out of your mind and get rid of that that wrong mindset there. Because Jesus said, I'm not come for the righteous. I'm come for the sinners. And if your righteousness does not exceed the righteousness of the kingdom of heaven, you are the, are the Pharisees and scribes, you shall no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. Humble yourself like a little child, or you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Well, we need to preach the word again. Don't worry about people, what people say about you. Don't worry. Don't let it affect you. Don't let it get down into your heart. I'm talking to some of you out there today. You quit on the kingdom of God, and God wants you back about his business again because he loved you, and you was doing a great work, but you got offended. Honey, if you're doing his work, let it offend them, not you. You see, God's going about to, I'm going to prophesy a thing to you today. God's about to reverse to that. Some of you have been offended because they made fun of you, said all manner of evil about you, said all kinds of bad things about you, but God's about to reverse that, and they're going to be offended, and you're going to be back about the Father's business again because God's going to purify your motives, your heart again, and he's going to put you back out there working for the kingdom again. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. They accuse Jesus of being a glutton, a wine bibber, friend of public and sinners. They accuse him of being full of the devil, using the power of the devil to do miracles. This is all Bible. I preach nothing but the pure, unadulterated word of God. Can I hear an amen? The Bible says, Matthew uh, uh, 12, 22, 24, and 28. Hallelujah. Jesus replied, Satan cannot cast out Satan, or we come to an end. His kingdom will come to an, to an end. They ridiculed and they laughed at him and mocked him. Amen. I told you that, that story about Jairus' daughter. They laughed at him. You know what Jesus did? He put them out. If there's people in your life you don't need around about you that's full of unbelief and doubt that tries to badmouth you for loving Jesus, and they say, you're corny, men don't love like that. Men don't weep, men don't cry. Holy Ghost will make you. Come on. Look. Get rid of them. Some of you need to get some rid of some of your friends that hang around you. The Bible said be evenly yoked. You need to get rid of that. You need to get rid of some people that's around about you and get you some good people around about you. Can I hear an amen? Because if you have good people around about you, they won't be speaking all manner of evil about you. Can I hear an amen? amen? You have good people around you, they'll lift you up and pray for you, not tear you down and let the devil use their big blabbing mouths and tongues and, and try to tear you down and say all manner of evil about you. Come on, I'll preach mm -hmm. nothing but the truth. Yes. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't worry about it. The Bible says in, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 that we all run the race. Run your what race to win the prize. Can I hear an amen? amen? Man, Jesus went through it. Jesus went through it. They even mocked him on the cross when he's on the cross dying. He's up there dying. They mocked him. They give him gall to drink. The Bible says they, they give, dip a sponge into gall and he was thirsty and they put up to his mouth to drink gall. They did everything to him. They beat the flesh off his back. They ripped his beard out. They mocked him. They put a crown of thorns on him. Honey, you ain't been through nothing like Jesus has been through. So why did you sit down and quit? Get back up today. Get back up. Shake the dust off and get about his business again. You ain't been through nothing he's been through. They talked about him. They ridiculed him. They put a crown of thorns on his head. What if they did you like that? Oh, you really want to quit. They put a crown of thorns on him and mocked him. The Bible said they laughed him to scorn again. 
Come on. You ain't been through nothing Jesus been through. He's done been through it for you. He's paved the way. He's made the way. And I'm telling you today, he wants you to be about his business again. Some of you quit because they mocked and they laughed and ridiculed. Honey, they mocked him and laughed him on the cross. Even they said when he hung upon the cross, if thou be the son of God, if thou be the son of God, come down off that cross and save yourself. You know why Jesus didn't? I'm going to tell you why. Holy Ghost just told me. He didn't come to save himself. He came to save you and I. Jesus didn't have to save himself. He's already saved. <laughs> he come to save you and I. If you be the son of God, come off that cross and save yourself. He don't have to be saved. He came to save you and I. Mm -hmm. Honey, it don't matter what they say about you. It don't matter what the devil tries to do to you. He mocked Jesus even in the wilderness in a temptation. If thou be the son of God, cast yourself off this temple. And the angels will bury you up in your hands unless you dash your foot upon a stone. See, it don't matter what the devil tries to pressure you and get you to do. Do what God called you to do. Do it in the love and the power he called you to do it in. Can I hear an amen? Yeah. When Jesus was hanging on that cross, he said, If you be the Son of God, come down upon that cross and save yourself. They laughed at him and they mocked him, but they wasn't laughing when he looked up and said, Father, forgive them. They some ignorant people. That's what he said. Forgive them, Father, of their ignorance. Forgive them, Lord. Forgive them. Father, forgive some of these people today of their ignorance. Get those people that you called to sit down and quit and run their right back about the Father's business again. In the name of Jesus. You know the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our life and faith. You know it says to lay down every weight and sin that so easily beset you and run your race that God has set before you. Can I hear an amen? Some of you quit running your race. Get back out there again. They did everything that Jesus. They did everything to him. They set him up. The Pharisees and the scribes were always setting him up. They always set him up. They set him up when they, they brought him the what? This is out of this is out of spirit, people. I'm sidetracked from my message, but this is the message of the Lord. They brought him, the woman caught up in adultery and said, what do you say we should do to her? They set him up. Just like they set John the Baptist up and they took his head off because he said, told him what he should do. He told, he told the king, you got Philip's wife. You're an adulterer. And they took his head off. That's what they was waiting to do with Jesus, to trap him and trick him and set him up. They were always trying to say things about Jesus or trick him and trap him and set him up. There's some of you out there right now. There's people that's trying to trap you, set you up, and trick you up. But you know what? God's going to give you Holy Ghost wisdom, and you're going to come above that. You're going to rise above that, and you're going to come forth for the kingdom of God. God's going to bring some of you back. Because you sit down and quit because of what people thought about you. What people said about you. I'm here. I keep saying that because there's some of you out there that did that. And God wants you to repent. And just, he's going to raise you back up. The Bible says God gives beauty for ashes. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And God's going to raise up something beautiful again. He's going to resurrect your ministry today. I'm prophesying a thing to you today. Some of you quit and God's going to raise you back up. And he's going to give you beauty for ashes, honey. And, and he's going to give you better and greater than you had. Amen? Hallelujah. He's going to shut some mouths of some of them that come against you. The Bible said, no weapons formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, thou shalt condemn. For our heritage is of the Lord, and our righteousness is of the Lord. God's about to shut the mouth of the lion of some of them people that's been talking all manner of evil about you. Can I hear an amen? I'm prophesying a thing to you out there, and it's going to happen in the name of Jesus. Tell me when it does. Write us and tell us. Or, or contact us at our email. Uh, our email is rdavis, little, uh, little letters, rdavis3491 at msn.com. Our email is rdavis, little letters, 3491 at msn.com. Write us and tell us that God's done a miracle in your life. I want to know. That encourages me to stand here, to keep prophesying, to keep preaching, because I know I'm on course, I know I'm on track, and I know I'm hearing God right, and I'm speaking right for the living God. Can we hear an amen? Not because I'm going to build myself up, puff myself up. I just want to know if I'm hearing God right. Somebody tell me. Somebody tell me. Can I hear an amen? amen. Give me a confirmation. Give me a testimony. 
That's why I said, Be not thou ashamed of the testimony of Jesus Christ. Revelation 12, 11, uh, it says, uh, We will come by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony and the love of their lives, not until the end. Can I hear an amen? We love you today. But I'm here to tell some of you, don't worry about what they've said or done. It's you and God, honey. You can't account for them. They have to count for them. But don't let them cause you to have to count to God because you listen to them. Go on and move on with God. Can I hear an amen? Just repent today. Say, Father, forgive me. You called me to do what I'm doing, and I'm going to do it. Father, I pray that you would empower them to do it, and that you would raise them back up and put them out there and even give them greater, Father, in the name of Jesus. Be about the Father's business. Jesus said, I must be about my Father's business. He wasn't sidetracked. Don't be sidetracked today. Amen? If you don't know Jesus today, ask Jesus. If, if, if you're tired of the old life you're living, if you're tired of it, and you're sick of the sin in your life. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. Your word declares, if I confess in my mouth that, that you died for my sins, was raised on the third day, and I believe into my heart unto righteousness, I will be saved. If you said that, God just saved you. And you know what? Jesus came to take away the sins of the world. Not to atone and cover them for them anymore, but to take them away. And he wants to take it away today. He wants you to make heaven. Can I hear an amen? We love everybody in this city. I want to see a great harvest come into this city, a soul, into the kingdom of God. That's why we're here preaching, amen, to this city. And when we're done here, God will move us somewhere else. But while we're here, we're going to do our working job. Don't be sidetracked, people. We're not going to be sidetracked. I don't care what people say about me anymore. As long as God's pleased, I'm pleased. Can I hear an amen? That's the way you should feel and think and do. Be about the Father's business again, amen. God bless you. We love everyone in this city. See you next program.